Hi, it's Mr. Townsend here, and this is my third video on atomic chemistry. Um, it's focusing on what we need to know for level one NCA science, but also just gives us a general understanding of atomic chemistry. Okay, so what we're going to look at today is what ions are, and how do they form? Uh, how are ions formed, and how do they form ionic compounds? So here's just an example of an atom. Now, uh, this is a lithium atom, and that's atomic number three. So the diagram here represents that by showing three protons and three electrons. Now, we might have remembered from an earlier video that the electron arrangement of lithium is two, one, and it has two shells that the electrons are in. Now, we also know that electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged. So we have three protons and three electrons. Now the um, positive and negative charges, the subatomic particles, or any charges that are positive and negative and near each other, will cancel each other out. One positive would cancel one negative. In this case, we have three pluses and three minuses. Um, so the charges are going to completely cancel each other out and they produce a neutral atom. So an, an atom is neutral because it has the same number of negative electrons as it does positive protons. Now this is different for an iron. Now this lithium atom will produce an iron if it loses or gains electrons. So the reason it loses or gains electrons is to get a full valence shell or outside shell. Now, if we look at the lithium here, we can see it can lose one electron and then it would have a full shell one with two electrons in it. Or it could gain seven electrons and it would have a full second shell. So its outside shell would be full. Lithium loses one electron because it is a lot easier to exchange one electron by losing it than to exchange seven electrons by gaining it. So it becomes a lithium ion, but now it's become a lithium ion, it still has three protons, positive charges in the middle, but now it only has two negative charges. So these two negative charges will cancel out two of the positive charges, but one positive charge is left, so it's now a positive charge on this ion. It has one more proton, positive proton, than it does negative electrons, so it has a positive charge. And when we write the symbol for this, oh, well, that's not here at the moment. So how does it actually do this? Where does this electron go? So in order for a lithium atom to become a lithium ion, it has to give away its electron, but it just can't give it away to the space. It has to have something that wants to take the electron. So if we look at this fluorine atom here, the fluorine atom has seven electrons on the outside. And remember, it could either gain electrons or lose electrons to get a full outer shell. In this case, it's going to gain one electron because it's a lot easier than losing seven electrons. So it swaps the electron, but now the atoms become ions. The lithium, remember, becomes a lithium 1 plus, as we said before. But the fluoride ion now has one more electrons than it does protons. It has 10 electrons and 9 protons. So it now becomes a fluoride ion, F minus. Lithium becomes Li plus. Now we don't put the one in here. Whenever in chemistry we have uh, like a one plus or there's um, just one atom, we leave that out. We don't have to put the number. In this case, we can just put the symbol. So if it's just a minus and just a plus, it means it's a it's one positive charge or one negative charge. So once we've formed these ions, here they are. Here's just a simple example of a negative ion and a positive ion. Because they are opposite Coulombic charges, or opposite um, electric charges, they are attracted to each other and they will move towards each other. Okay, so this is 
the start of how an ionic compound forms. Now we can go, okay, well that's how lithium fluoride compound forms. Well, this is true, and it forms in a one-to-one -one ratio because there is one positive and one negative. So, but this is not the reality of how a compound forms. So the compound is actually, um, it comes together like this. So imagine we have the positive lithium ion. Well, it just doesn't attract one negative ion to it. It attracts another one to this side, and then another one to this side, and another one to this side. Because the reality is that when we react lithium with fluorine, there is a whole bunch of lithium atoms that react with a whole bunch of fluorine atoms. So they're all mixed together, trillions and trillions of these atoms that become ions, right? So there's, there's lots and lots of these ions floating around. And a positive ion will be attracted to negative ions all around it. But there's more because the negative ions, of course, are going to be attracted to positive ions as well. So the positive ions surround the negative ions and the negative ions surround the positive ones until we get a lattice. Now, this lattice is a repeating pattern of ions that will be millions high, millions of ions um, across and millions of ions coming out towards us and away from us. And it forms this perfect pattern um, like you might see a can stacked in shelves or bricks in a wall. It makes this repeating pattern. And notice that the whole structure of this ionic compound is held together by this attraction between these negative charges, these opposite negative charge, because a negative um, iron is surrounded or touching a positive iron, so it has a strong attraction to it. And a positive iron is attracted to the negative ions it's touching. Now what this formula here means, so once we have a lithium ion and a fluoride ion and we put them together, we get rid of the charges because it's now electrically neutral. And also what we do is we don't need to put down the one, there's one lithium and one fluoride here because it's a one. Now this lithium fluoride doesn't mean there is one lithium and one fluoride. It means for every one lithium, there is one fluoride ion. They are in a ratio of one to one. So let's look at another example here. This example is an oxygen atom in the middle. Now I know it's an oxygen atom because there are eight protons in the middle and there are eight electrons in the outside. Now the, the issue with the oxygen atom is, sorry, there aren't eight on the outside, there are six. The issue with the oxygen atom is there are six electrons Remember, it could either lose six or gain two. It's a lot easier for it to gain two. But if it's reacting with a lithium ion, or sorry, atom, if it's reacting with a lithium atom, it can't get two electrons from one lithium atom. Because once a lithium atom gives away one electron, it won't break its full shell one to give away another one because it's happy with its full shell one. So what an oxygen atom will have to do is find two separate lithium atoms that it's going to get an electron from. So if I react oxygen with lithium, it must react in the ratio of one oxygen to two lithium atoms. Now what that means now is, well, the lithium is still going to be a positive one because remember it has three protons and two electrons so it has one more proton than electron but the oxygen ion must be a minus two okay so it must have two negative charges because it now has 10 electrons because it's accepted two and it has eight protons so it now has a charge of two minus now what we've noticed here is we need two lithiums for one oxygen. These two positive charges completely cancel. If I would put lithium together with the oxygen ion, I would put two lithium ions with the oxygen ion and 
those charges would completely cancel each other out and produce a neutral compound. Now this neutral compound would be made up of the ratio of two lithium ions to one oxide, oxide ion. And therefore we get the compound that looks like this. Lithium, two, two lithium ions, one oxygen ion, lithium, two oxide. So this is how we um, think or calculate or work out the ratio of lithium, sorry, of ionic compounds. So we can write this down. So if we, if we were just being very carefully writing this down, the first thing we would say is a lithium atom loses one electron to form the lithium ion. The oxygen atom gains two electrons to fill its outer shell. Therefore, two lithium atoms react for every one oxygen atom. Once that reaction has happened, we can say that the two lithium ions have a total charge of plus two. They balance the negative two charge of the oxide ion so that the compound now has a neutral overall charge when they combine. The bonding attraction between the lithium ions and the oxide ions is what is called an ionic bond. That attraction is an ionic bond. Well, I hope this has um, clarified some of your ideas about how ions are formed and how the formed ions get together to form an ionic compound. Thanks for listening um, and look out for more videos I have to help.